So I guess we're starting with the uh, Universal After School yep. Program, yep. please. Okay. So, yes, uh, for the record, uh, Jim Damore, as Consul, we're going to draft 5.1 of the After School Program Bill. The changes from last time are highlighted in yellow, and there's just a few of them. Um, so first is on page two. The task force on line seven has 15 members now, from 14. Um, page three, the additional member is the executive director of Vermont After School Inc., or designate. And then on page four, that date got fixed. Um, and then lastly, on page five, the appropriation has been changed um, to reflect the current membership. Um, there was a conversation last time about whether we have the appropriation here or whether to maybe not have the appropriation here but fund it through the agency of administration is overall appropriation and uh, Chair Baruth is going to speak to um, the administration or maybe, uh, I'm not sure who, but I haven't, I haven't heard back on that yet, so I'm not sure which way to go. So currently it's the same way it was before, which is in preparation in this bill. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Jim, uh, the amount 72 last, uh, the last draft was uh, like 84. Yeah, that was decreased. Decreased. We got every kind of the, the people, and I think only six people should qualify. Eight people should qualify. Only eight. Okay. Two, uh, two members of the General Assembly qualify for sure, and then you have six members who wouldn't otherwise be paid. I don't believe. Uh, and those six members are. Um, so going to page three, we've got. Um, uh, 10, 11, well, hold on. 9, 10, 11. Uh, 9, you know, the chair should be okay, I think. Uh, but a rep of home state program has 1, a rep of Vermont board school has 2, and then I have 3 here, that's 5. I think I did include the, the chair of Vermont Council, so I wasn't sure. For any appropriation that's not used, it would be um, revert back to revert back. So being a little bit high in this number is okay. Um, go ahead. I think we should make them do it out of their own budget for two reasons. One, because the administration is asking for this, and so they've already said they want to do it, so they should pay for it out of their own budget. And two, because there was already a study done in 2015 that this would essentially be replicating, so why pay for it twice? But we need to pay for it twice anyway because whether you appropriate here in this bill, will you appropriate general fund money to the agency? I know, but general. if we if we put it like this, then the general assembly has to come up with the money. If we make them do it out of their own existing base budget, then oh, they have to come out of the, okay. come up with the money. And oh. this is an administration proposal, I don't know that funding was included in the budget for it, so I think it should be out of their base budget. I feel like that's the committee down the hall's job to figure it out. Yeah, well, what, what we should hear from uh, Senator for what and how his conversations went, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah, so we can, and we're, we're supposed to vote on it, but we should wait for him for that as well, too. So, um, any, any other questions at all? Okay, thank you. Why don't we move on now to um, the power to the state board? Okay, so you should have a handout, um, which looks like this document here. Um, so this. Sorry. So this is the division of state board rulemaking practices uh, between the state board and AOE as proposed in the draft that we're looking at today. Um, so state board rulemaking authority uh, is listed first. Um, I won't read them, but they're here. I would note the Series 5000 is the one that's controversial. Um, that's one about licensing of educators. Um, I'll come back to that momentarily. 
Um, so, oh, sorry, I repeated my caption headings here. So the second group here is not a stable we're making, sorry, it's AOE we're making authority. So we have not gone through this, this list before, so let's go through this list. Um, so rules about the, they haven't even changed the rules of state agency, but the agency. Uh, rules about length of school day um, and year, my GED drivers education, uh, use of restraint in institutions and schools, uh, pupils, uh, school buildings and sites, uh, school bus idling, uh, rules for um, bidders for contracts, construction management, relationship with public other agencies and institutions, school lunch programs, child and adult care, food program, public bids, net cost per pupil, full-time equipment enrollment of pupils, allowable and extraordinary transportation expenditures, uh, science skill calculation, and um, reporting students uh, for whom English is a primary language, and coordination of services to children and, and adolescents with severe emotional disturbance. So that's the division as proposed by Chair Carroll of the State Board. Um, welcome back to the Series 5000 here. On the next page, you'll see this is the first page of the, of the Series 5000 rules. And if you look at the top, it's Vermont State Board of Education. So it's issued under the Vermont State Board of Education. However, having said that, go to the next page. Uh, this is called statutory authority, um, which all these references are not to the state board. They're all to the, um, to the 1691, uh, etc. These are all, um, where did we go? Sorry, 16, 17, 15, um, These are all references um, to the board that oversees the professional educators we talked about yesterday. Um, that's the standards board. So I don't know that's why this is confusing, because actually it makes no sense to me why you have rules issued by the state board when they don't have authority, <laughs> and why they're not issued by the standards board which does have authority. Um, I don't know. But um, I Wait, who, so who does this have? This is not AOE's no. authority. This would be the, the state the, the, uh, licensing, the thing we talked about yeah, yesterday. Yeah, the licensing board, uh, the, 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 the okay. standards board for... Stan, okay. Yeah. So it's a different board. It's an independent board that is appointed by the governor. It's a separate board. So I'm not sure why it's being done the way it's being done currently. Um, probably we need to hear from the board, um, the board on that. Um, for purposes of the bill, though, I don't think it should be under the state board's responsibilities um, because it's actually statutorily assigned to the standards board. So I think the draft probably needs to be amended uh, in that respect. So I'm just a little confused about the, the, these lists. So the, the top list is what the state board of education does now? The, and the, and state, the, state board of education does everything now. Everything. Oh, absolutely everything. everything All so the rules. This, this is a okay. proposed division between the state board, the first list, and the spent my typo, AOE, the second list. Okay, that's just AOE. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems to me that we should probably get some testimony from somebody who's on the state <laughs> licensing standards board yeah. Yeah. Um, and figure that out because it doesn't make sense. The, uh, the other area that seems a little strange to me looking at the two lists, thank you for doing this, this is really helpful, thank you for asking for it, Debbie, um, is that um, special education is under the state board, um, and most other, I guess in pre-K is too, but most other sort of, well, I don't know. This, and, and is this a comprehensive list? If there are not other things that they make rules about? What about oh, the sliding scale? Where is school finance? And, I mean, I guess they have the census-based funding up here, special education finance. Yep. But there's not 
there are rules, I think, under, well, maybe it's under, under the tax code, um, but to my knowledge, there isn't more rulemaking about okay. school funding. Um, um, well, anyway, I'm not, I guess I would like to hear more about why the board, you know, what, what John Carroll said was this was the stuff they were most invested in. And I'm not sure why special education would be under their purview and not. So, I mean, some of this stuff makes sense, school district organization and the private school stuff and alternative structures to the extent that's even a thing anymore. Yeah. Um, and the quality standards, but anyway, I don't know. Yeah. Well, they've got the hot button issue, right? Pre, pre K and special ed. Um, they want to they want to tackle. Yeah, I, and maybe I mean if they're both okay with that, maybe that makes sense. But um, yeah, we haven't heard from the secretary yet. Right. Yeah. We, yeah. We really need to take this one. Good. Hello. Sorry. I'm late. 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 This, this, this is a weird. <laughs> this is a weird on the chapter. Uh, the power of the agency. This says it's the okay. board of professional educators, yes. but then it's really yeah. a standard board for professional educators. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then, do other boards have only other sort of standalone boards? Um, actually, a few of them. I can't share what they are. Yeah. Um, we were just this organization we have over here is basis for separate. Um, yeah. 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 Moving on into the yeah, I was, I was just yeah. explaining that this is the list uh, as proposed to be divided up. Mm -hmm. and the next page, there was the mystery of why the rules uh, for preparation of educational professionals is under the state board, um, and the authority to issue those rules is not under the state board; it's under the standards board. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why it's done the way it's, it's being done today. So that's an open question. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Yeah, we can, so my, my idea on this, I think it was a great um, idea to do a side-by-side. -side. Um, my thinking was we could try to have John Carroll and um, Secretary French or Designee yeah. in the room in real time and have them uh, make their arguments yeah. because otherwise we're gonna wind up, you know, going back and forth and back and forth between them. Right. Better if they just, well, if possible, work some of it out. But, and is there a description of like what each series means in more detail too? Because like education quality standards would basically would that include like a proficiency based type situation allow the board to do what they did? Uh, yes, I think that is. So why are we keeping that authority with them? If the whole catalyst for this move is they went into that. Well, that's space and that's a good question. So. You had, a, you had a board pre-Phil Scott, right? because the governor has sort of methodically remade the board in certain ways. And so they were, I would say they were an outlier. The board, as it existed under Stephen Morris and, uh, and Bill Mathis as co-chairs, they had a really expansive idea of what the board was supposed to be doing. Stephen Morris was about to retire from the board, so he, he didn't, you know, it was senioritis maybe on his part. Um, but Bill Mathis, I, I think, just has a very expansive idea of the board's powers. Right. But the board now under John is much different. So the question would be, do you strip them of that? Uh, I mean, I would, because John's not going to be chair forever. True. On the other hand, it doesn't remove the problem if you put it into AOE. You can also have right. an activist secretary. That's true. Um, and in fact, at least then you'd have an administration who's responsible for it. Yes. But I mean, uh, the proficiency based learning thing was partially Secretary Holcomb working with the state board. Um, so it wasn't like AOE was, uh, you know, they were an active partner in that proficiency based right. learning. So um, 
but it's a, it's a good thing to flag. So what I would suggest everybody do is, on this side-by-side, -side, make notes for yourself. I'll have Jeannie, um, I think it was next week, that Secretary French was going to come in and speak to this. Yeah, the Thursday is when yeah. you told Ted. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if, if possible, I'll talk to John Carroll and see if he would be up for that and see if the Secretary's up for that. So, some people don't like, uh, you know. Yeah, but we did it with, uh, what did we do it where we had the two sides? You did it with the um, teacher negotiation, uh, the contract negotiation thing. The, there was yeah. that, but, but we did it for, um, uh, speech for the Oh, no, no, it was the. Uh, we did do it with speech for the <laughs> Yes, yeah, the and universal chart of accounts. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, Remember, right. we had Secretary French and then the three businessmen. And that was excellent. Right. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and it prevented him from saying, well, nobody feels this way because yeah. then they just in real time were speaking to each other. Can we also have the whoever is the representative from the standards board then? Sure. Because they're supposedly Absolutely. in charge of these regulations. So let's let's think of that as like uh, And my question too is Jim is even in an email, because this is a pretty good description of series five thousand, do we get more than just a name definition from these so that we can look into what they mean? Sure, I can do the first page for each but these are rules that go on for Or maybe just a, a sentence of description and of each one, just so that way. Is that possible? Or like the scale. If I can, yeah. It, so if, if it's possible. Yeah, to, yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to capture. <laughs> yeah. 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 Word um, makes sense, but. It may be. I'm, I'm not sure how much uh, collaboration has already gone on between the board and AOE. It may be that they've already agreed to this duty split. If they have, I think it still makes sense to bring the standards board in and ask them uh, just to cover all the bases. But basically, um, we're just looking to make sure that they're okay with this bit and that we think it makes sense. But, you know, I, I don't see anything on here that um, strikes me as out of, out, of, out of line or crazy. So if the secretary's willing to have all of these officially on his plate, the board's willing to give up all of them, I mean, Board, I don't think it's acquiring anything new. They're not taking anything from it. No. Okay. No. Okay, so let me. So I take it we skipped over you know, well, we look, access because that was. Well, we actually looked at it, but we didn't vote on it. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Why, why don't we um, go back to that one before we start a, a walk, a, a real walk through uh, the other? So the only thing I wanted to add. Um, the big thing was about money, about input, who pays for the appropriation. That was oh, shoot. I never asked. I was going to ask Jane <gasps> Kitchen. Um, what if, why don't we do this? Why don't we, uh, if, if you're all right, just go with the language as written. When the bill goes to appropriations, I'm going to have to go in and talk about it anyway. I can ask them at that point what they think about. Making them meet it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. As we know real well, the view was expressed that we that since the governor is asking for for this, that they should be never should. I said it was just to close down the hall. Right. So what I mean one way to resolve it is keep the language as is, save the question to be asked when by now. So Okay, so I want to um, pick up this thing. Um, Watch your head. Amy, I'm just uh, remembering that you had sent me. She's dying in the corner. Do you need some water? No, I'm okay. You sent me a link to, uh, to that report that we said we would put in as something that they have to look at. I think we already put it in here. Did it go in? Yeah, and then shall consider the report as I'll close it. Yeah, it's in. Uh, this is uh, it's in. It's a different after one? school for all grants. It's not actually a it's a, it's a It's a model. <coughs> um, 
Should I explain it? Please, quickly. Just okay. introduce yourself. For the record, Amy Schellenberger. I represent Vermont After School. And what I had talked to Senator Berth about, and this, there is a link on your website. Uh, I forget what day it's linked on. Um, it came from Senator Ingram. There's a, a, in 2018, legislative year 2018, fiscal year 2019, there was a chunk of one-time money that was set aside that was opioid and tobacco money that, that was directed to the Secretary of Human Services to figure out what to do with it. And, and at the time, it was Secretary Gobey, and he was told to do prevention, intervention, and treatment with that, with that money. And he recommended, and it was accepted, that $600,000 of that, I think it was $9 million total, would be put into a grant program basically designed to do what um, the governor is proposing, to get more after-school uh, programs available uh, in communities across the state. And so that money was directed to go to um, DCF, and they did do a grant program, and the money has been allocated. And so um, I just let Senator Berth know that, and he thought it might be worth of the task force taking a look at how that program went. And not that you'd have to do it that way, but just that it already happened. Yep. And Dr. Levine is now named as somebody who's going to be on this task force. So it would be, um, I think it would be right up his yes. to his so wish he's aware of that. Okay. So my thought was that we could, in, uh, in the powers and duties section, we could add a number where we say um, the task force um, will review. Uh, it was called the after school for all grant program. Yep. Um, we'll review the um, status and performance of the after school for all program. Run, run by DCF. Got that, Jim? Mm -hmm. uh, do we need to put the commissioner with the Department of Health? Yeah. You were saying? Uh, oh, Dr. Levine, but yeah, Secretary of Human Services. Um, but that might be the district meeting, right? It could be the district meeting, yes. I think that's their intention is to have okay. um, Dr. Levine or his designee. Does it mean that that was uh, Kendall's? In Kendall's email, that's what she suggested. Oh, okay. So, but we can just leave it like that. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And that allows it to be him. Um, so, Jim, you want to take us through the changes, or the few changes? We're going to do our first draft. Okay. We'll do it again. Six second. So, we've got uh, phase two. There are 15 members now, uh, line seven and 14. Uh, Phase three, uh, the new member is uh, line nine, the executive director of Vermont After School Inc., or designee. And then uh, page four, the date was uh, corrected to 2015 for that report. And then on page five, the appropriation has been updated. Okay. Um, any. Uh, Questions or discussions about this draft, with the understanding that Jim would make that last addition. Okay, then I would entertain a motion. So moved. So moved, Senator Birch. Final discussion. But, oh. Well, but we we don't have that final language. Do you want to wait to yeah. see that? Can. <laughs> if you want, it takes me 10 minutes or less to go okay. up and do it. Um, yeah. Why don't, yeah, why don't you go ahead and do that and we'll just um, be at ease and just start. Okay. So, while, while we wait for Jeannie to come back with those, let's take a quick look at the state border. The also. So we walked through before the first uh, part of this bill, 
do you want me to go from there or go back to the beginning? Actually, last time we went to, why don't you pick up on page four? Page four? Yeah. Okay. Well, page four is the kind of the middle, middle part of the um, CIP board's cars and duties. Okay. They have all the possibilities? Yeah. Okay. One. Yeah. So. And that's enough. Yeah. So now we're waiting for me and Corey. No, do you, you have a good one. No. I have one. I have one. We can share. We can share. Okay. okay. Let's, right. let's, we'll be environmentally conscious. Sounds good. I think we're already far. I think we're already far. All right. So let's do so six We're over to six, um, draft 6.2 of your community building after school programs. And we are on page four. And this new subdivision four. I'll look on the Which reads, the task force shall review the status and results of the after school for all grant program administered by the Department of Children and Families. Yeah. Excellent. Nice. It's a broad casket there. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you. Wow. So. That better be worth I it. I return to they, they must, Senator they must, they Perkins' I motion. Is still on the tape. Yes. So I um, changed did not affect my motion. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion of draft 6.2 prior to that? Okay. Not seeing any. Senator Hardy. Aye. Senator Ingram. Yes. Senator McNeil. Aye. Senator Parent, yes. Senator Perchlet. Aye. Senator Bruce. Aye. Uh, Senator okay. Four. Thank you guys. <laughs> All right. Aye, aye. So I'll report this one. Um, and it's going to have to make the stop in appropriations, and I will ask about that language. Um, but otherwise, I think it's ready to go. Can I see the assignments? I'll yeah. it over to after we're done. So then you you bring me the thing to take upstairs. Um, how does that work? This is a complete bill, right? So yeah. we did last week, right? It goes, goes to the left. I go right to draft operations and they take care of it. Okay. The individual bills, I believe, you have to bring to the secretary. Okay. Yeah, that's what we did last yeah. week with the committee bill, and then yeah. it just shows up, yeah. and then they'll refer it to groups. Yeah, okay. Just like yeah. That. Good enough. All right, so let's go back to the state board bill. Go to page four. It's yours. Thank you. Okay. So we're on page four. Um, this is the uh, state board's powers and duties section. Um, so we're going through uh, um, and talking about uh, um, a very top of that page this question about whether we should have licensing of ed ed educators here. I think it should come out. Uh, but go to the standards for it? Yeah. Um, do you think we need to address it? We do, uh, this was never here in the state board's powers. So this was added um, by, by Chair Carroll. I think under the mistaken belief that they have those powers because it's in their rule. I see. So I think he was just going through the rule saying, oh, with these. Right. Maybe uh, they just print those rules that the board creates. Maybe it's clear do. in the statute that the board shall <laughs> create. Uh, and it's in the statutory authority in the back, and that rule set is all pointing toward the statute. Right, yeah. So, okay. um, so I think I'll maybe the next get that out, if it's okay. Um, and then line four, review rule was proposed by the agency prior to pre-filing. Um, so that's where we're not parallel, what, where the state board's reviewing the agency's yeah. rules, but not vice versa. And this was added by John? This was added by John. Okay, so that was one specific yeah. question for the secretary. And I thought I thought if you were going to do this, the requirement should really be an AOE to have to get comments from the agency of education instead of, instead of making the requirement on the board. Uh, um, Does that make sense? Well, the requirements, if well, we wanted them they, to review. I think this is an additional thing in addition to the normal rulemaking 
uh, soliciting input yeah. from anybody. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't it doesn't stand in place of that. It adds to if they want to pass rules, it adds to it that they have to pass them. At the very early stage. At the very early stage. <laughs> Prior to pre filing, they have to review them, but only if the AOE sent them to Prior to the prefile, but there's a duty coming up on the secretary to send them. So, uh, so do, you are doing it both. Well, well, yeah, yeah. Let's just um, quickly have a, a thirty thousand foot discussion of that, um, and of course we'll ask the secretary and we'll ask John Carroll. But what what do we think about should um, rules proposed by AOE go to the state board just as a matter of principle? I mean, I think there are pros and cons, but would any, anybody have a, a strong feeling one way or the other? But as a heads up or as a, here are the rules, get us comments before we will, we will look at your comments before we file. I take this, tell me if I'm wrong, Jim. I take this as saying, review rules, but without the power to stop the rules or force changes. That's true. Um, the language that the secretary has, just to be clear on the, reverse side of this equation here, is on page 7, line 20, it reads, the, the Secretary is required to submit rules proposed by the a Agency of Education to the State Board prior to pre-filing the proposed rules. Um, the Secretary shall, shall submit proposed rules to the State Board for review within a time frame that accommodates the State Board's review of the proposed rules and the secretary's ability to respond. So it's basically, that's it. There's yeah. no, no ability to change or to otherwise influence. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, you remember in the lead bill, um, especially Debbie and Ruth will probably remember from the conference committee, we wanted to make sure that, um, we, I think it was in the original bill, we had language saying that they should draw advice from uh, AOE and Department of Health uh, when they did their rules, mm -hmm. and or maybe it even drew in a and R. But but we specified that we wanted the rules to go to another agency as well. Mm -hmm. They should draw on their advice, but they didn't have the power to stop it. But we wanted to make them put their heads together. And so this is doing that with everything that AOE does. So just as a matter of course, they'll be shaping <coughs> rules of all kinds to the state board. Um, what, does it work the other way? No. Yeah, so I don't know if that's a... I mean, if you're okay. Dan French, you definitely don't want that extra step. Yeah. No. Can, if we didn't put this in, can the state board weigh in on any rulemaking that... During the process, sure. But not prior, as it Yeah, yeah. Done. Which is also public comment, the other chance for everybody else. But it's, it's shaping their rules before they get the public And nothing's comment. preventing them from getting their input voluntarily. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I guess I would be for leaving it the way it is now, and then, again, having having the two of them. Do it now. Sort of. <laughs> I mean, yeah. because, you know, really it is turf that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. This was prepared by the state board, so obviously John has a specific approach here and he's this is still set up in an oversight man um, I don't know that I think that's such a bad idea to have uh, a semi-independent set of eyes on it so let's leave it for now I imagine that's a place where the secretary <coughs> will want to discuss but anyways keep going okay all right okay so, um, we'll back to page four again. Uh, there are some minor changes to um, number nine here on um, line seven. So, promulgate and implement, for example, uh, move to um, pre K from kindergarten. So, this is, this is student performance. Um, um, so, that's been changed. And then, last at the end, um, so it's the same as you'll include. Uh, standards for reading level proficiency for students. Now it says clean such grade level or levels as the board shall determine before specific to grade three. So it gives them a bit more latitude. 
Um, and then coming down to the bottom of the page, we start deleting language. Everything that has been deleted from bottom of page four, page five, page six, um, up to the top of page seven, those are all things moving to the secretary. Okay. Um, you see them in a minute because they're, they're going to be over there. Um, 21 on um, page 7, so line 3. Uh, report uh, annually to the governor and the General Assembly on the current condition and future prospects of education in Vermont. So I, I think that's a really great example right there of basically what he's trying to do. <coughs> so you look at what he's gotten rid of, the development of education policy, that was language that was really fought over when we made this the commissioner and secretary and the, the department and agency and the board was adamant that they were going to be the, the main education policy shop but now he's changed it to basically um, reporting on what they see but without the sense that they're supposed to be developing policy according to implement it. Um, so I, I actually like that change because I think this draft places the, the burden for policy on the elected people, on the legislature and the administration, which is answerable through the government, the governor's election. Um, so and it goes back to the very beginning of their powers and duties, which yeah. has the introduction, which talks about their. Um, duty to establish and really update a bunch of strategic vision. That's where I go. To your point, that's where it's going right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, now we move on to section two, um, page seven, and this is the secretary's <laughs> duties. So uh, the secretary shall implement rules adopted by the state board. Um, uh, hold on. The secretary shall implement rules yeah, adopted by the state board. So right there, if you stop, state board is doing rulemaking, but implementation, execution is with the secretary of those rules. And shall, uh, and then this stuff is all moved from basically the state board over here. So make regulations uh, governing the tenants and records of attendance of all students and the Department of Students attending public schools. Uh, direct the Agency of Education to adopt rules pursuant to um, yeah. Does Department of Students attending public schools mean, like in reality? What is? What are they reporting on? Um, <coughs> report, um, right. Department. Good question. Bill, what does that mean? I mean, <laughs> just I, behavior. I assume back in the day that meant teaching them to be good citizens. You know. Um, behavior, citizenship, uh, those sorts of things. It's outmoded language. Yeah. Um, governing the attendance and records of attendance of all students. Just trying to think, do they do anything that could come under the heading of deportment now? I mean, they do, yes. So like hazing, bullying. Oh, um, I was thinking of like the you know, clothing. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, for instance, hazing and bullying, if I'm remembering right, those <coughs> those rules come out of state board? There's your state board rules today. Yeah. They've been moving to the secretary and do this draft, I guess. Yeah. Um, I, I just, okay. if we can't really quite say what it is, is that something we want to have in there? Yeah. Sure. I, I think... If we take that out, we might want some general descriptor there, because as it stands now, it's specifically attendance and this big umbrella. And I agree, deportment's not yeah. necessarily. Why don't we circle it? We'll ask John Carroll and the secretary what they think. Maybe they have a suggestion. Okay. 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 So. Um, line fourteen. Um, so the secretary will direct the agency to adopt rules um, as necessary or appropriate for the execution of the secretary's and agency's powers and duties, um, and as directed by the General Assembly. Um, 
And then, as we went through this before, the assumed rules for the agency, uh, by the agency to the state board. That's here. And then uh, line five talks about approve, approve the status of independent schools as approved independent schools. So the rules were adopted by the state board on approval of independent schools, but the actual execution, again, is being done by the secretary to approve those schools under those rules. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. You might have just said this. I was looking. But the rulemaking series for independent schools is still with state board. State board, correct. And this is um, just that uh, approval kind of approval of individual schools yeah. pursuant to the rules is the secretary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when it says to establish criteria governing the establishment of a system for the receipt, deposit, accounting, and disbursement of all funds by supervisory unions and school districts. 27, ensure that the agency develops information, plans, and assistance to aid in making technology and telecommunications available and coordinated in all school districts. The Secretary shall develop guidelines for distribution of federal, state, or private funds designated for the development or expansion of, of distance learning technologies. The guidelines shall encourage consistent with any, any terms or conditions established by the funding source, uh, collaboration between schools and school districts to realize economic and educational efficiencies. So can we stop there, sure. John? So is this language language that John Carroll wrote? No, this is lifted exactly from this, the Air Force duty. Oh, where we repeal. All of this is okay. existing language is moved. Got it. Yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering about that. The guidelines shall encourage consistent with any terms or conditions established by the funding source. I take it that's reference to federal funds. Probably, yeah. Um, it's a little, in the age of privatization, it's a little loosey-goosey, the language. Um, in other words, could you have an administration that would take money and then say, this asks us to go along with their conditions <coughs> for the money? You know what I mean? Could we, could we say uh, established by the, sort, the federal source of federal funding or um, I just don't know well, whether it says or private funds where does it say so or oh I see okay. line, line 12 starts this idea that the secretary might be working with private funds and those if if he or she is They'll develop guidelines consistent with terms and conditions established by the funding source. But that's only for the development or expansion of distance learning yeah, technologies. That's, that's specific to that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, is that line even necessary? <laughs> um, you mean the line the guidelines shall encourage? Uh, 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 yeah, all of 27. Um, I, I think you could get rid of the dependent clause there and just say the guidelines shall encourage collaboration between schools and school districts to realize economic and education efficiencies. Because if there's a money source that forbids you to collaborate with other schools, you shouldn't be using it anyway. Um, what would you guys think about that? Um, that well, I can only hear from somebody what, okay. what, what when this would happen. All right, so I'll put a bracket around that with a question mark. Yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, yeah. Yeah. sensitive these days to, um, you know, there are, there are big dollar donors out there that are looking for poor states to insert money into their educational systems with strings attached. Yeah. This seems like you could read it that, well, we took the money, now we're legally bound to go along with their guidelines. Mm -hmm. So in effect, you have the donor writing <coughs> the guidelines. Mm -hmm. But anyways, good point. Yeah. You can ask uh, John and uh, Dan Fitch. Yeah. Okay. OK, keep going. 
and uh, 28 says report <coughs> annually on the condition of education statewide and on a supervisory union and school district basis. The report shall include information on attainment of standards for student performance, number of types of complaints of hazing, harassment, or bullying, um, and responses to the complaints, uh, financial resources and expenditures, and community and social indicators. The report shall be organized and presented in a way that is easily understandable by the general public and that enables each school, school district, and SU to determine its strengths and weaknesses. To the extent uh, consistent with state and federal privacy laws and regulations, data on hazing, harassment, or bullying incidents shall be desegregated by incident type, including desegregation by ethnic groups, racial groups, religious groups, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, uh, disability status, and English uh, language learner status. The secretary should use the information in the report to determine whether the students in each school, school district, and SU are provided educational opportunities substantially equal to those provided in other school schools, school districts, and SUs. Um, that we've updated pretty recently. For the, the F1 was yeah. the uh, ethics size. So this report here, um, <coughs> just to contrast, this is a pretty detailed report that the Secretary does already. So almost all this stuff is being done by the Secretary, in fact, uh, mm -hmm. today. Uh, so this report's being done. Earlier we went through a report that the, um, on page seven, uh, <coughs> that the state board has to do, which is one of the high level condition of future prospects we talked uh -huh. about. So there's two reports, um, one more high level, one more detailed uh, mm -hmm. here. Okay. Um, and then uh, page 9 again, line 15, ensure that Vermont students, uh, including students enrolled in secondary career technical education, have access to substantially equal educational opportunity by developing a system to evaluate the equalizing effects of Vermont's education planning system and education quality standards. Um, so, I'm curious as to where that's being done. <laughs> um, it's a pretty big task. Um, and then we move on to conforming changes. So it's just the first step. So these we have not been through yet. Um, Wait, can I just? You said you're curious as to if this is being done. Yeah. We don't have evidence that it is being done. Well, I was looking at the scope of the task involved. Right. Yeah. I'm sure. Hey, it looks like. Um, Developing a system to evaluate the equalizing effects. Um, system. That's a, I'm not sure if I know what that exactly means, but it well, sounds like a we, For instance, we commissioned the Pikus report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the Pikus report basically said that Act <coughs> 60 and 68 are doing a pretty good job equalizing um, opportunities. Um, so, but developing a system to evaluate is different than commissioning one report. Right, yeah. So. And one could argue that the weighting study was also about this too. Correct, yeah. Whether, yeah. yeah. Let's, I'll make a note as a question of that as well. Okay. Page 10, um, the leader assistant says performing changes to it should not say current law, it should say a law, um, in 16 BSA Chapter 3. So these are performing changes as a chapter, Town 16, on the State Board of Education. So the first set of performing changes is to that one chapter. And then we'll go through the rest of the chapters after that. Okay. So um, Section 3 um, is an amendment to Section 41. Um, authority of agency to use federal funds to aid education. Um, and so this says, before we get to the highlighting, it says the agency is, is designated as a sole state agency to establish and administer any statewide plan required as a condition for receipt of federal funds made available to the state for edu any, any educational purposes, including uh, career technical education and adult educational literacy. The language you have to see underlined got moved from the state, po the state board's powers. So it's now being put into the secretary's authority. Subject to state board rules, um, 
The agency is responsible for administering or supervising policy for adult education and literacy activities in the state, performing all the duties and powers prescribed by law uh, pertaining to adult education and literacy, and acting as a state approval agency for educational institutions conducting programs for adult education and literacy. So again, that's more the execution side of it, the rule making, but this is under the state board. The execution side of it is under uh, the secretary. Mm -hmm. Next page, um, section four on line three, um, we designate, we designates um, section 166. So moves it from the state board chapter to chapter one, subchapter one, which is a, a chapter about administration generally. So moving it within the state board chapter into a chapter that's more generic. Um, and this is the uh, approval approved and recognized infant school section. And line uh, nine uh, says application, the secretary shall approve an infant school, etc. cetera. Um, if, it, if it substantially complies with state board rules. Um, line 20, approval. Jim, I'm yeah. sorry, before I forget, yeah. um, on this, is there a way you could, um, or maybe you did already, Indicate which which are being moved. So this oh, is. They're off. Everything is on the state board today. Everything. Everything's on the board. So what's being moved is the bottom half of that page. Ah, okay. Got it. Okay. Keep going. So this section here, there's a lot of changes in this section, but basically what's happening in this section, this high level is, again, the state board is responsible for making rules on appro approval for independent schools. The secretary is the one that actually approves those schools. So the changes here are all on that theme of, um, of doing that. So line 20, um, approval may be granted without the secretary's evaluation in the case of any school accredited by a private state regional agency or financial the state board for training purposes. Um, on application, the secretary shall approve an infant school, the office kindergarten, etc. cetera. Um, line seven, the secretary may delegate to another state agency the authority to evaluate the safety and accuracy of buildings um, in which kindergartens are conducted. We shall consider the findings and recommendations of any agency in making the secretary's approval decision. Wait, wait where are you? I lost you. I'm on page 12, 12 line 10. And then uh, 11, uh, line 11, approvals under the subsection B shall be for a term established by rule uh, of the secretary, uh, but not greater than five years. Um, so then it says the secretary may revoke, suspend, or impose conditions upon an independent school. So they're more execution related. No changes on page 13. Page 14. Um, line one, the withdrawal or conditioning of, of the school's accreditation. Can I stop you yeah, for sure. a second? Yeah. So I know that this is just this is existing law, but since we're going through it, yeah. I'm curious on um, page 12, that paragraph about kindergartens, the secretary may delegate to another state agency the authority to evaluate the safety and adequacy of buildings in which kindergartners or kindergartens are conducted. Assuming that came in when kindergartens were moving from half day to full day or from not existing to existing, and there was concern about whether our school board buildings were adequate enough for kindergartens. Mm -hmm. And now these same concerns, not to bring this up to, before we get the bill, but these are the same concerns that some people have about pre-K programs. Mm -hmm. Now it seems to me that everybody's comfortable with kindergarten being in school buildings, but it's pre-K that this is an issue for. So I'm wondering if, this is out of date and maybe might come up in the context of that pre K bill and these might. Let's mark it for a question. Okay. Um, I would hesitate to yeah. the, uh, I, change it to pre K um, with the dual oversight uh, problem yet to be resolved. Okay, we're going to page 
14, page 13, uh, we need a context for this. So page 13 on, on line 4 mm-hmm. says, uh, if an independent school experiences any of the following financial reporting events during the period of its approved status, the school will notify the secretary, um, um, and then it has a list. Uh, and on the next page, number 6 on the list, uh, the withdrawal or conditioning of the school's accreditation on financial grounds by a private, state, or regional agency recognized by the state board. For accrediting purposes, that stays the same. And just a reminder, we wrote this a couple of years ago and it did get used for the Compass School thing. And after talking with John Carroll and the secretary, it seems like these rules worked fine for gave them the authority they needed to go in and basically demand um, oversight and gave them some teeth. So. Uh, line five, the, uh, the secretary who uh, reasonably believes that and presumes that school lacks, so again, it's more execution related. Uh, then the secretary shall notify the school. Uh, line 10, if the secretary, after having provided the school an uh, opportunity to respond, uh, does not find the school has a satisfactorily responded or demonstrated its financial capacity. The secretary may establish a review team. Um, Is that, wasn't it the State Board of Education that did the review team this year? It would have been, because it would have been. Yeah. Under the yeah. yeah. So in the case of Comp- higher ed, it's, isn't it the uh, State Board and um, Put together a team to go in. I'm not sure about higher ed in, in, in this context. Okay. Um, uh, my question was the report of its findings and recommendations. Did that? Did it used to be the reverse? That a report went from the state board to AOE? Where, where, where are you, sir? I'm sorry. I'm 19. at the uh, bottom of 14. Bottom of 14. 1920. Um, <laughs> so that's unchanged. So that report today would go to the state board, and under, under this bill, it still go to the state board. So, so without the changes, it would be the state board submitting a report to itself. Um, I thought too. <laughs> okay, hold on. Yeah. Or maybe it's the team. It's the team, I think. Yeah. To the larger board. Uh, the. the Old language where the state board may establish a review team that with the consent of the school includes okay, two. Yeah, to, to, yeah, so the review team will submit a report to the state board. Okay. And it was the state board that created the review team that went yeah. to the Compass School. Yeah. And yeah. we want the, the, so the state board retains rulemaking authority about private schools, but the actual Oversight and enforcement would be under the secretary. Right. Yeah, correct. Right. And that's what we want. Well, so that's an open question. Um, obviously, John, speaking for the board, wants to keep um, rulemaking for approved independence with the board. I'm sh- well, I don't want to say I'm sure. I would bet Dan French has something to say about that. Especially if they're taking over oversight of the finances. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, I think if you if you buy the idea that having an independent independent board is a good thing, and that it can provide a way to depoliticize certain functions, I don't have a problem with them retaining their rulemaking authority over independent schools um, because. What happened with the 2200 series could just as easily happen with a secretary who is very, um, you know, very determined to reshape the environment for approved independence. So, what I like is having the two of them providing oversight on each other. So, I guess in that case, it doesn't matter to me which of them has it as long as the other one's a check on them. So, in the future, if you ran into that, you'd have a potential ally outside of the one, whether it's the board or the agency. So I'm, I'm fine with that duty split. 
I think it makes sense to have the secretary be doing this kind of stuff because the board is all volunteer. So when they sent this team out, um, you know, that's probably a certain amount of you know hardship on them to have to assemble people to actually go do that work on a volunteer basis as opposed to the agency saying to you know whoever um, you have to go today and do that. Yeah. I think, I think we talked about, that we're going to talk about this later, about the funding, because they wanted positions to do some of this work, right? And yeah. Although they're already doing yeah. a lot of this work without them. But it seems like that's a key issue. One of, one of the things I'm wondering is why have the board do any rules? I'd like your idea to check, but why not just have all the rules by the AOE and then have them check on all the rules? Well, they'd still have to have a, a board to review them and then Legal support. Right. Um, no, right. They were just reviewing and. Trying. I mean, it's it's an argument to be made that we should just have the secretary and AOE do all the rules. And in fact, Dan French could come in and say that. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he did. I think John's reply would be that, as Jim pointed out, they have institutional memory and, and a historical. Um, connection to those bodies of rulemaking, mm -hmm. you know, I I think if we're going to keep them, well, one way to think about it is that this is not the last word. We're we're spinning off about half of their or th uh, third of their rulemaking to AOE, and it may be that ten years down the road, somebody decides to get rid of their rulemaking altogether. But it, this seems like a a reasonable um, redivision. So, absent a strong argument from either of, well, basically absent a strong argument from Dan French, I'd be inclined to let them keep two thirds of what they're now doing. But how do you feel, Andrew? No, oh, that makes sense. That's a good rationale for letting them. Part of it. I mean, I think their institutional memory could be used in reviewing. If they're kind of like reviewing and commenting on all the rules and submitting that to the LCAR and ICAR, mm -hmm. then that's, that's that's an important role still. I will say that in terms of the special ed rules, the advocates, I don't know if they spoke to any of you, but they definitely came to Kate Webb and myself, and they were sort of outraged how AOE was going about the rulemaking. They didn't like the draft rules. AOE listened to them and said, thank you very much. We're not taking any of your advice and was going to move forward. John Carroll and the board kind of opposed that quick steamrolling of, of the advisory group and now have a compromise worked out with them. That seems a case in point for yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. So, so even if they have to approve them, I'd be okay with that. But that makes it hard because then they have. Right. If they, if they don't agree, then how do you resolve it? So you really need the authority to submit the rules by somebody. Yeah. But if whoever's reviewing them, can, I mean, that's ICAR and LCAR, and they're just looking at legislative intent. So. Well, now they're, I guess the compromise is now they're going to see all the draft rules in an early form with the board, right. and they could make a stink about it if they don't like what they see. To go back to the positions, you know, um, John in his testimony, in the case I was just talking about, he said, if we had to, we will hire legal help to basically sue AOE. <laughs> and that's my worst case scenario, is that the legislature gives the board independent um, legal help and they sue the legislature or they sue AOE because that's not um, good for anybody, I don't think. On the other hand, they want to have people to review the rules and give them legal advice. So the way it works now is they draw on AOE and they make it work. So again, I, lacking a strong argument from AOE that they don't want to do it the current way, I think, I, I don't favor giving the board positions or their own lawyer, and especially since we're spinning off a third of their work. It's, to 
tough to go to the appropriations committee and say we need a position. Okay. Okay. So we're on page 15. Um, 16 or 15? Uh, 15, sorry. 15. Um, okay, so this, the secretary, if the secretary concludes that improving the school by expansion capacity, um, then the secretary may take action. Um, or get execution oriented. And then it says, um, in considering whether an independent school lacks financial capacity, um, the secretary should take, uh, oh, what actions the secretary should take if the secretary makes this finding, the secretary may consult with um, various folks. So again, more execution oriented. So Jim, why don't we stop there? Okay. Um, just everybody put a note where we stopped. And we'll pick this up tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And I imagine the rest goes pretty quick compared to no, we're, no? we're going now. No. <laughs> okay. It's a lot worse than we're only on page fifteen. Don't we only have ninety eight well, months ago. I thought the uh, the wholesale transfer gave us a lot of stuff to look over that was underlined, but it's is are a lot of the other pages just changing? State board. Okay. All the same sort of thing, but same competition. Yeah. And you'll find some awkward language in the some areas where I'm looking at it saying, well, this is the one that makes sense to me. And yeah. so with right. the, the, the things you have to talk to. I mean, result. just there's so many old things that yeah. don't make sense, it like up oh, deportment. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're talking about it, we might as well update it, right? This <laughs> tapes. Okay, Savannah, so thanks for the question. Sure. So committee, um, just a reminder, we're breaking now because I have the uh, sexual assault task force that I'm going to